Life in the village of Nogrant was hard work. Predators, both beasts and men, roamed the mountainside seeking to steal the sheep that the village depended on for survival. The nobles, more concerned with their wars and their lands, often rounded up the military-aged men and led them to slaughter. The very old and the very young were left to fend for themselves. And so, as soon as they were first able, every resident was trained on the crossbow. Anything that threatened the village would be met with a hail of bolts. It was here a young Grunwalder was born and raised. And while he was just a tiny lad, his father too was rounded up by the nobles of Valandia, where his life was thrown away on the walls of some battalion keep. Young Grunwalder grew fast and he grew strong, becoming both a master marksman and a dissenter of the nobles of Valandia. Determined not to be another one of their sheep, he sets off to forge his own destiny. If you're not familiar with the Kingdom of Rodox, it's a warband faction. And if you never played warband, just know that you're missing some serious shit in your life. Like many of you, I took a chance on a $10 Steam sale and it forever changed my gaming trajectory. Uh, I fell in love with warband once I put Floris Mod on top of it. I damn near died playing those two together. Just an amazing game. Love it so much. If you read down here in the history, the Rodox were originally part of the Kingdom of Swadia, which comes from Valandia, but they successfully fought a war for independence. And so the goal of this playthrough is to successfully fight the War of Independence from Valandia and establish the Rodox Kingdom even earlier than in lore. A follower in Warband once talked of a veteran named Grunwalder who came over the hills and taught the Rodox the art of war and how to defend themselves against cavalry. And you can see here the strength and weakness of the Rodox faction. Excellent spearmen and outstanding crossbowmen, but lacking in cavalry. So here's the rules for the playthrough. Rule number one, no cavalry, ever. All of your units must be either Valandian infantry, Valandian crossbows, or some merc troop that fits into those categories. So, for example, mercenary macemen could be used for infantry, and of course, mercenary crossbowmen or sisters could be used to fill in the ranks. Valandian foot soldiers and mercs, that's all you get. And that's because the Rodox are fond of the spear and the crossbow, and their armies are largely composed of spear arm foot soldiers and professional crossbowmen. Also, no helping Valandian nobles ever. We're going to start as Valandia, that's going to be our culture. However, from the time we set out from Nogrent until the time we come back and start kicking those Valandian nobles' asses, we got a chip on our shoulder about those guys. Not a fan at all. And we're looking for any way to get back at them. But our army is going to be heavily focused on besieging and defending castles and defensive battles. That's what you're trying to focus on, although obviously you're going to have to do a lot of attacking as well. Another rule I want to put in place is no tournaments. You don't like nobles and all their fancy tournaments and all their pageantry and bullshit because you know what it really is. You know it's just the common folks getting sent up those ladders to die. So you've got no time for that. No cavalry, no tournaments, no help in Valandia. In the early phase, 
You're sick and tired of all the banditry and thieving going on. So you gather up some lads to put a stop to it. And then you begin to make a name for yourself. If you're new to the crossbow, let me give you a breakdown of the mechanics real quick because they can be a little confusing. To fire it, all you do is you hold down your left click on your mouse and you can move it around and then when you release, it'll fire out the bolt. Then you have to go through a lengthy <laughs> reload to get another bolt on there and you'll see there's two parts. So the first part is pulling back the crossbow. The second part is loading the bolt. And then if you hold it down, take aim and let go. Now, when you're doing the first part, you'll see you have to stand still, but the second part you can move to throw the bolt on there. So you only have to be standing still through the first part of the reload. Also, if you wanna cancel your shot, just hold right click down and that'll pull it down. And then you hold left click to pull it up, right, hold right click to pull it down. Left click to pull it up, right click to hold it down, just like that. You're gonna screw it up a few times and accidentally send a crossbolt out, sometimes into the back of your dudes, it happens. Another thing you may not be aware of is that you can aim and then if you hold left shift, you'll get a little bit of zoom in. That can be really nice for picking priority targets and or kind of focusing in on shooting underneath a shield or in the gap in a line or something like that. It helps give you a little bit more focus. But that's the basics. If you're looking for a crossbow to get started on, it's hard to find one with below 20 skill. But over in Empire Towns, you can find these simple light crossbows and these are great ones to get you started getting that crossbow skill up and you'll level it quickly. Also a great crossbow if you're trying to get your companions with hardly any crossbow skill something to get started on. These simple light crossbows are available in Empire Towns, so keep a lookout for one early game if you need a starter crossbow. And word travels quickly that you're quite the enforcer. And other lords are having problems with bandits in their lands. So it's not long before Garios of the Western Empire sends word to you to offer you a mercenary contract to come clean up his lands as well as you've cleaned up the Valandian ones. This is your Merc phase. And you are to bring law and order to the Western Empire lands. Here's the rules. You have to clear bandit camps in Western Empire territory or if it's affecting Western Empire villages and villagers. Now, of course, look for the quest to get that sweet money, but you have to clear them out even if there's not one. Also, any quests like Caravan Ambush, Army of Poachers, or Extortion by Deserters, anything where there's somebody being naughty, your job is to handle it, and that's what you're getting paid to do. And it's not long before you've created yourself one of the finest companies of crossbowmen in all of Calradia. Make sure all that hard work pays off and don't forget to treat yourself to one of these bad boys right here, the Bound Crossbow, one of the most powerful weapons in the game. With the power of this crossbow and the awesomeness of this mustache, you're going to be the most badass man on the field for sure. And one of the things you learn very early in your mercenary career is that you and your company of crossbowmen are spectacular in sieges. And helping these empire boys defend their towns, well, there's a lot of money to be made in work like that. Everybody gets to position, got our boys up on the walls out there, kicking out hate. And one of the best things we can do is get on these siege engines, start leveling up our engineering so that someday, should we have a thief of our own, it'll be impenetrable. And so, young Grunwalder was baptized in the art of siege warfare. And look there. 
Didn't even break a sweat. I give up. Collect our Stop. prisoners. I give up. Grab all these prisoners. And all this loot. And now we can turn in all the regular prisoners to the local magistrate. We get tens of thousands in loot to sell. On top of that, look at how much the Empire pays us for helping out because it got your influence all the way up to here. Look at that, 76. Do remember on your build that down here for just a few points in the charm tree, you also get an extra 30% influence gain from battles. And when you're a mercenary, influence is money. So here's an extra 30% of it every time you win a battle on top of the Valandian cultural trait, which is 15% more money as a mercenary. Don't rush through this phase. Farm your ass off. But the most effective way to farm is to farm these big battles when you can. Towns are a lot less risky than castles, but you make a lot of money either way. Talking about leveling up charm, one of the best ways to do it is to grab yourself some prisoners, take them to the keep of, say, oh, the faction leader you're trying to get vassalship with, go to the dungeon and donate these prisoners. One, two, three, four. And then when you drop them off in there, look at what happens. I get a ton of influence. I get reputation with the faction leader. I also would level up my charm if it wasn't already maxed out at this point. And that influence turns into money. So now I'm going to make $28.60 a day while I'm just running around looking for more trouble. So remember the rules of this phase. You have to help clean up Empire lands. And of course, you can help the Valandian lands too when you go back to get more troops or whatever. But if you see a bandit camp or there's a quest that they need help, that's what you got hired to do. Don't rush your mercenary phase. There's skills to level, gear to buy, and a ton of money to be made if you play it right. And the final rule of the mercenary phase is you have to stay as a mercenary for the Western Empire until you're offered vassalage by Garios. And then you can become a vassal and begin working with or using the Empire armies to help you get back at the Valandians. And now you've earned your vassalage, you've paid your dues, and you've learned the art of the siege. It's time to take your first prize. One of King Durthurt's own thieves, Sargot. And when it comes to offensive sieges with your army, don't let them get all tucked behind the walls. That's some bullshit. Put them in spread formation and get them up there. Gonna earn your money today. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get them all situated out. Where's the other ones? Right here. Get them up here. Spread them out. Don't let them sit back there and start eating a bunch of shots. Get them right up here in the thick of shit. And you'll see. They'll start clearing the walls. And this is a great place to use that zoom in if you want. Well, as I shoot right over his head, so not so great for me. Another one. Jeez. Well, you get the idea. Ah, oh, come on. Look at how my boys are putting them down on the walls. That's how you want to deploy them. They might be a little close, but it doesn't matter. They're doing fine. Don't let them sit back here in a big pile where two or three of them are shooting. Although sometimes it's kind of a good spot for you to sit back and shoot from. I mean, it's hard to even get a shot off. Look at shit is dying so fast up there. They're crossbowmen. This is their job. It's their part of the siege, so. Get up here, earn your gold. Once the uh, siege towers are up, then the infantry earns their keep. No one's getting carried here. Soldiers! Cut them down! Send them in right behind the infantry. And when they get on top of those walls, if they have ammo left, they'll shoot down into the infantry. Look at my Oklahoma gang pouring in there, no hesitation. 
You guys are fucking studs. God, I love these pixels. And that's how you do offensive sieges. You just use the spread offense, put your group down in front of the walls and let them get to work. And now that it's ours, it's time to stuff this baby full of infantry and crossbowmen. And then at some point, your lands will be so powerful and rich and your army so strong that the empire will lose its usefulness. And remember, my fellow Rodox, the mascot of our glorious kingdom, the Mountain Bear. And so, from a humble sheep village on the outskirts of Galen, to the king of the Rodox. Of course, we do need to talk about your gear and your spec. Now, you've already met Big Marge, and do be sure to name your crossbow. Uh, and of course, you're going to want to grab one of these Pavi shields, preferably with some type of modifier on it. Get yourself an arming sword, and then after that, just tuck yourself behind some really nice armor that you find or buy. And for a banner, I just use the fastest movement speed one I can, because when you're on foot and your troops are all on foot, Half of the game is just running to the enemy. The quicker that happens, the quicker you can engage and get on to the next battle. Taking a look at the build here, I'm not going to go crazy, but I do want to break down some of my favorites in the crossbow tree. You'll see right away I went with faster aiming and faster reload speed. You can come up here and do more damage to mounts, but you already do a shit ton of damage to mounts. One of the things to be aware of, if you look at one-handed, as you level it, you do more damage. Two-handed, more damage. Pole arms, more damage. Bows, more damage. But with crossbows, you only get reload speed and accuracy until you get up to the last point. Now, I'm not going to show you uh, the last point in any of this because I want you to get it. I want you to earn it and I want you to see it. But you'll see at that last point, you get half a percent per skill above above 200 and so you'll already be at 275 when you've got it just do it you will not be disappointed i'm not going to ruin it for you just do it and uh, you'll see even my shots in here without that last perk hit very hard but once you get that uh, you will not regret going crossbow it does take a little longer to reload but there's something about having to pick your shots and then paying off that is just amazing so you get more reload speed, but you don't get more damage until the end. But there are traits in here, like Sheriff, that gives you plus 50% more headshot damage. And then coming on down, here you get more armor pin, and so do all your troops. And remember, I'm the captain of my crossbowmen, so all these captain perks are going into my 150 plus crossbows. There's just damage in the air. This is a really nice one. Anytime a horse bumps you, even if it doesn't have a rider, it'll screw up your reload animation and make you start over. But if you have that resistance to getting staggered, you won't start over on your reload animation. You'll just continue through. This is an essential talent to have and make sure if you're not the captain of your troops that your captain of your crossbowman has this. It saves a lot of reloads. Long shots, this lets you zoom in a lot more and it actually is really nice because you have limited ammo on your crossbow and so making your shots count is really important. And this allows you to zoom in and see where those high priority targets are or to shoot those battalion fiends over the line or that are standing back from the battle a little bit. This helps you zoom in and I'll show it to you in a battle. This is one of the most powerful, amazing, fun, spectacular, awesome talents in the game. Trust me, 50% chance of dismounting enemy cavalry with a heavy hit from a crossbow. And your hits, especially if you max it out, are heavy every time. Uh, the amount of cavalrymen I've knocked out of their saddle is just awesome. And it plays perfectly into this hating the Valandian nobles and their mounted buddies uh, playthrough. This is the talent you got to have.
You got to get this talent. This is when that crossbow comes to life. And oftentimes in battles, I kind of let my guy soften up the enemy and shoot it, whatever. And I save my rounds for when the cavalry hits the lines. Because you're dropping them out of their seats with this. And it's just so much fun. And there you can see a little extra damage for my entire crossbow line. Now look at this one. Pick shots where you get minus 50% wages to tier 4 plus ranged troops. Guess how many of those I have? In a playthrough where you're already going to have a ton of crossbowmen. I mean, this is a perfect perk. And a little extra hit points for him as well. And then, of course, Mighty Pool. Not going to show it off. You're not going to see it in this video. If you want it, you earn it. You won't be disappointed. I always love athletics, but I find it to be absolutely essential on those characters that are fighting on the ground. Not only do you get movement speed, lighter armor, which helps you move faster and such, but also for this ability right here, braced. That charge damage reduction is essential when you consider the amount of cavalry that's going to be charging through your crossbow line all over. There's going to be horses everywhere because you're not going to have anyone really to stop them. And you kind of want them to come through your line and come up close because that's when your boys really start dropping them. But it can get pretty chaotic at times. But you're definitely going to want to cut down on that charge damage taken. And uh, this perk is essential. Make sure you have a captain with this perk if it's not going to be you. And then, of course, we get one extra endurance point here. And then even better, up here at steady, an extra control attribute, which is going to play into that crossbow skill. Now, from athletics, if I could go back, I would have gone into engineering and leveled my engineering as quickly as possible. Uh, I would not suggest starting your own kingdom until you are a badass engineer, because winning the external siege between the siege engines is essential for making the enemy attack the walls. And if you're only at this level, a lot of times they can get those trebs up and just crack the wall. So I would actually go, I would start with athletics, probably one hand until you can get a crossbow. And then once you get a crossbow, put your five focus in that. As soon as I'm merkin, I'm coming into engineering because if you can win sieges for your faction, you will win huge battles. Your renown will level insanely fast, which means your clan level will shoot through the roof. Uh, and all the rest of this stuff can level very easily. You can level charm like I showed you, capturing enemy lords and turning them in. And that way you get that big payday still. And leadership is going to come very quickly once you start leading armies. I wouldn't worry about these until that phase. And I did toss some in roguery just because the extra battle loot is nice. Uh, just more money. But I think, again, if I could go back, I would have started with engineering because... Being able to dominate in sieges is a moneymaker, honestly, because you get a ton of captives. You just it's, it's a great way to farm. When you get this one here where your defensive siege engines have 30% more hit points and you get the fire versions of them, on top of that, you come with some of the best siege defense troops in the game. You can really turn the battle on some sieges. I mean, a lot of times... The, the enemy doesn't even get to the walls and you just collect a ton of everything. And so if you haven't done an engineering focused playthrough, I would suggest you try it and really try to help out your faction defend its fiefs. I think that you'll see it's both a lot of fun and a nice change of pace from just chasing armies all over the map all the time. So the core Grunwalder build for this playthrough, one-handed, crossbow, athletics, engineering. After that, do what you want. And you can see I didn't max this tree out, but the goal is if you're going to do a playthrough and you're going to start your own kingdom, I wouldn't until you have because this is going to increase your party size. And when you combine all the troops you're going to get from your steward, having this max leadership perk on top of the kingdom policies you can enact, you're going to have a massive army of spears and crossbows to smash those Valandians with. And that's what it's all about. You're not going to have any noble troops. So while you can take on larger armies, it's not as effective as, say, having an army full of Khans Guard or Fians. Uh, you are going to have to pick and choose your battles carefully. It's very easy to get overwhelmed by cavalry in the open, 
and or if the infantry hits your lines and you're kind of dealing with them and then the archers are behind them and they're shooting into you, it can absolutely turn into a shit show for you very quickly if you don't pick your battles correctly. And I lost some battles in this playthrough, but I took my lumps because I wanted to be able to tell you what it's really like. And so you do need to be a little bit careful. One of the best things you can do is fight just like the road ox are notorious for. Try to fight in uneven, hilly, mountainous terrain and or in sieges. But on top of sieges, another great place to fight is in villages. Because it channels the enemy right to you. And then look, sorry, this is nighttime. Uh, but we're still going to do this because I got a hell of an opportunity. And what you can do, look, I'm putting these crossbow guys out in the water. And I'm going to put my infantry right here. And watch. It's going to be nuts. When you fight in these villages, look, it pushes those enemies together. And a nice big pile of meat. And see, look, this is that 100% zoom. And you can just hold it here. So like if you get a good angle or you need to bracket, you can just hold it. It's going to get a little funky, but we got guys in the back here shooting too, remember. And we're mostly seeing green. I can't get a clear line of fire here. But anyway, you can see and then look, they fight a little bit. And then the second the enemy backs off, which I don't know why they are. I guess they're trying to get out of here. Yeah, they're trying to retreat now, but. And so this is the power of some great terrain. I mean, this is an army twice the size of mine. And then you just want to level up. Oh, come on. Don't be afraid to use villages as battlegrounds with this Rodok army. You'll be amazed at how effective they can be. And then when you have to fight field battles, try to fight them on terrain that's advantageous to your guys. The main goal is to just bottle them up and bolt them down. However complicated you want to make that and whatever you think is going to be most effective, do that. Of course, you can always put your infantry out front and your crossbows behind them, preferably on some elevated ground. That's a great way to do it. Another thing that's really effective is if you split your infantry into two different formations and put one over here and one over here, they kind of catch the cavalry coming in. And then if the infantry comes up the middle, you can kite them through this tunnel and then have these guys attack and they'll start hitting the flanks. And then you just run your crossbowmen back because remember, you're the captain. So they've got move speed. I've got that move speed flag. They're not going to catch you. And you just keep running back until those infantry give up the chase and they turn back into these guys. And that's when you come back around and you start pumping those guys from behind. And you can take down huge armies that way. Also, these squares are great for catching calves, slowing them down. And all it takes is pausing a cavalryman for a second and all these bolts flying through the air, well, one of them's going to catch him and knock him right to the ground. Uh, we'll go ahead and do it this way so that I can show you. We'll put these guys right up here like in a diamond. And then we'll put these guys down here. That way our crossbows can shoot over the top of them. My rules are if I'm attacking, I attack. And if I'm in defense, then I defend. But I just want to show you how effective this strategy can be, unless I lose this battle. And uh, if I do, you know what? We'll just let it be, because that's a lesson, too. Now, you don't really have to worry about enemy fire, because as you can see, everyone's been issued their car door to hold up. I mean, these guys must have left biceps the size of Mount Fuji. But uh, they'll take a few pops here and there, and they're pretty well armored. And they actually do pretty well in melee. So don't be afraid. If You know, they, these frontline guys, they, uh, they'll they do all right for you. So you don't always have to just Move run in. away. Let's scoot them Get up moving. just a little bit more because I want my guys in the back to be able to shoot. Now, one of the things you have to be careful of, uh, see, this guy's one of my followers. This is actually my doc. And so if you play with companion death on, then you really don't want to put your 
high level surgeon in the front line. So sometimes you need to make an extra group and put them back here in the back. Look how sexy these guys look, huh? You guys doing okay? Everybody get a little Gatorade? How about you fellas? Looking good over here. I'm liking all the spears and crossbows doing this Rodox style. Okay, you know, here they come. So once they get pretty close like that, we're gonna let the boys open up and you're gonna see that Christmas tree start growing. And we're gonna fertilize the hell out of it with these crossbow bolts. Look at them, just pumping. Oh dude, I'm kind of blocking your shot. Let me get down here. There you go, fella. Now I'm gonna save mine for these horse boys that are coming in and uh, get a little revenge here after what they did to Paul. You sons of bitches. Make sure you watch for the two horsemen I'm able to hit with this thing. And when I hit them, watch. See how it knocked him down? 50% chance, and now he's toast. Number two down. And just take good, accurate shots. That guy just died. Ah, uh, well, you hit the horse, that's fine. You're gonna miss shots, just, you're just knocking guys. See why I saved my shots for the cavalry guys? But see, that's what I'm talking about. These damn ponies just pop you. And look, look at that square out there. It just, it just bottles everybody up. There you go, stud. You can see how essential the charge damage is. Oh yeah, there we go. There's a noble, that's who I'm looking for. Oh well, I shot that horse in the ass, that ain't good. Oh shit. Oh, he's fine, he got a white skull, he just got knocked out, my bad buddy. I mean, don't stand in front of me while I'm shooting, okay? I'm sitting here trying to put a guy together. This guy's not even paying attention. Ah. Uh, and then when it gets low like this, just unleash him. So you can see these field battles get a little chaotic. And like I said, the cavalry is going to be in your line. So make sure you get that reduction to charge damage. These Rodok boys, mountain bears indeed. We're not breaking. That's just how we like it. It will take many victories to break the nobles of Valandia and the other factions who seek to use the common people as sheep. Grab your crossbow and sword for a new kingdom and a new way of life must be forged. Are you up for it? Poke the home out.